This is part two out of two Apple Watch videos that are meant to help you get more out of your Apple Watch. Uh, the first video I covered over 10 great tips. This video, there's more than 10 tips because there's tips within tips. So make sure to watch them all. When you're done with this one, if you haven't, go check out part one. That way you can have like 25 plus tips between the two of them. Also, uh, down in the description, you will find links to the latest Apple Watches. Number one is removing apps from your Apple Watch. When you have different apps on your phone and they have an Apple Watch version, by default, they'll get loaded up. And there might be a ton of things that you don't really need. Now, there's two ways to delete apps. The first way would be on the watch itself. You can long press on the screen and then hit edit apps. And from here, you can, you can move around and pick which apps you want to delete. Some of them you can't remove. These are the system apps in there that are going to stay with the watch. Another way to delete apps is within the app. If you go open up the app and scroll down to the bottom, you'll see installed on Apple Watch. You select the app and you can say show app on Apple Watch. No and that's it, it'll be removed. Tip number two is changing your app view. Personally, I don't like this whole setup right here, but if you hold down on the screen, you can choose list view. So once you delete the apps you aren't using, scale your list down, you can now scroll through and access apps alphabetically. Number three is the app dock. Like your computer, iPhone, or iPad, there's a dock on your watch. You may not know that, but when you press the side button, you are looking at the dock. But by default, it's going to show you your most recent apps. But if you go into the app and you go under dock, here you can decide whether it shows you your most recent apps and it'll just update them and keep them in order of use or your favorites. I prefer the favorites because these are the apps that I'm going to access that I don't have a complication for uh, that I want to get to quickly. If you click edit, you can rearrange your apps, remove them, and add additional apps underneath that. Number four is switching between apps. Let's say maybe you are using the workout app and the now playing app. You wanna hop between the two, let's say to turn down the volume of what you're listening to. You can double tap on the side and it's gonna take you to one app, Double tap again on the crown, and it's going to take you to that other app. Double tap again, and it goes back. So you just swap between the two apps. Now this isn't part of the 10 tips, but it is one that I mentioned yesterday. It is pairing AirPods to your Apple Watch. I think that adds a lot of value to be able to carry audiobooks, music, or a podcast on your watch. Uh, really convenient. And pairing AirPods is also great for making and receiving phone calls. Oh, it's cool for this video, I'm not gonna just use any AirPods. I'm gonna use some AirPods I'm really excited about. They are the Colorware AirPods Pro and AirPods third generation. These, if you're not familiar with Colorware, are custom painted AirPods, the AirPods you would normally get from the store, but these are custom painted in a lot of different color options. They also paint controllers, consoles. These are their latest colors, the high-vis colors, acid green and blaze orange. I've always thought of these things as the ultimate gift for somebody else, or maybe a treat for yourself. But let's say for somebody else, can you imagine if you open these up and you saw them painted in your favorite color, you open them up to see these beautifully painted AirPods? Oh, I mean, come on. My mind would be blown that somebody would get me a gift like this that is so unique. This pair is gonna end up going to my wife and I know that at some point someone's gonna go, where did you get the, are those AirPods in green? Yeah. They're pretty awesome. So if you'd like to learn more about these Colorware AirPods, definitely go check them out. So to set up though, a pair of Bluetooth headphones or AirPods, uh, if you already have AirPods set up with your phone, they are gonna show up as an option on your watch. What you would do is you would go into the control panel, you would go to the little AirPlay icon and select the AirPods that are already paired up. Or if it's something new you're pairing up and you wanna pair them directly to the watch without using your phone, you could put the AirPods or Bluetooth headphones in pairing mode. And then when you go to the control panel, you can swipe all, all the way down and hit connect a device. And it's going to search 
for the di different devices that are around. And from there, I can pick whatever set I want to connect to. After this, make sure to check out the other tip videos so you can learn more about listening to music, podcasts, and audiobooks. Tip number five is controlling your smart home from your Apple Watch. What's cool, some manufacturers make Apple Watch versions of their app. Two of them that I have complications for are my LifeX, uh, devices and here I can access whatever favorite scenes I put in or favorite lights which is really cool uh, for my August lock I can unlock my door right here from the watch under apps I have switchbot who doesn't make a complication but is still there so I can control them now what's really nice for control is using the Apple home app if you launch that on the Series 7, you see the additional icons that give you some of the status of your house. If you scroll through, you can see other devices are on. I can see my cameras if I want and flip through those, connect to those. You can see favorite devices and favorite scenes or you can go by room. I can select the office and I'll see the devices in here, the scenes that are on and be able to select individual scenes. A lot of control right from the watch. Very cool, especially the camera stuff. Now, number six is one of my favorite tips. It is creating reminders list and sharing them with other people. Uh, my wife and I share three shopping lists. We have our Costco list, we have Target, and our general shopping list. Now, with the complication I have right there, I can just launch right into reminders, Go to my target list and see the different items that I need to pick up and just go through and check off items on my list as I pick them up. Now, number seven is notifications. One of the things that can be really irritating about the Apple Watch is notifications about things you really don't care about. I don't need every app's notification on my watch. Now, to change those settings, you go into the app and one of the first things you see is notifications. And you'll get your different choices down here for notifications. You can tap, see full notification, um, have it show you while your wrist is still down. Um, you'll get a summary when it's locked, blah, blah, blah. Your different options, your notification indicator, which is the red dot on top. Um, but down below that are the different apps. And there just are things that I really don't need to hear about. Uh, one of them that I keep seeing and I forget to turn off is fantasy football. I don't need it to give me some random thing about a player that's going on right now. Uh, Fiverr, I don't need notifications. Uh, Geico, there's a ton of them. You just go down and pick which ones you want notification. It's so much better than just feeling that vibration and going, that was nothing. Number eight is using the Apple Watch remote app to control your TV. This is perfect if you misplace the remote or you just want to mess with someone. What you do is you just launch the remote app you're gonna see your list of Apple TVs that are available. So let's say I want to grab the living room one and you know, I could just hit boop to just pause on or select. Or I can back up, back up a menu, or just send them to the home screen, whatever. It's a lot of fun, you just mess with your family members. Or control your TV yourself. Maybe you can't find the remote or don't wanna get up and get it. Now number nine is unlocking your phone or computer using your watch. Uh, the way that works is if you go into settings and you set up your device to unlock with your watch, when you go to open your device, the watch will provide this security authentication for you. So it won't need face ID, which definitely helps if you're out somewhere using a mask. You can also unlock your computer so you don't have to use touch ID or enter a password. Now to turn this on on your phone, you would go into the phone settings, go under uh, face ID and passcode, enter your passcode, and there you're gonna see iPhone unlock. So just make sure that's turned on and your watch will unlock for you. Now, if you're doing it on your computer, you would go under system preferences, go under security and privacy, general, and then use your Apple Watch to unlock apps and your Mac. Very convenient, you wake the Mac, pops right open. Number 10 is unlocking your watch without having to use the passcode. It basically works the opposite of tip number nine. And what that means is you would go under the Apple Watch app, 
you go to passcode and here you're going to see unlock with iPhone and it says when this is on unlocking your iPhone will automatically unlock Apple Watch as long as you're wearing it. Now a couple of bonus tips under settings I want to share with you. First would be adjusting the text size. If you scroll down within the settings app and go to display and brightness you can select text size and there you dial the crown up to get to the text to where you want it. Also under display and brightness, you can make your text bold and you can turn off your always on display so that it will go black when your wrist is down. Now the last one down here, if your watch goes to sleep too quick, there's wake duration. You can change it from 15 seconds to 70 seconds. Now a couple of bonus tips in the workout activity section. If you open up the activity app and you scroll all the way to the bottom, you can change your goals for each of the activity sections. So first change goal is the calories you want to burn. Next, you can have an exercise goal. And last, you can do your stand goal, how many hours you want to achieve in a day. Another tip under workout, is if you go to a workout and click the three dots, you could determine what metric it's going to base that workout on. If you want to burn a certain amount of calories, go a certain distance, or run for a certain amount of time, you could set those here and it'll let you know when you reach those goals. Now, what is your favorite Apple tip? Let us know in the comment section. Next, make sure to check out part one. There are 10 great tips in there you don't want to miss. I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching. Bye.